feel, hit, action. Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Because Trish is dying to know. I am. I was very serious when I did that. You were. Mm, very serious. Mm, it's a very serious topic. It is a very We're very professional. We are. Okay, today we are talking about a message that we got from Nancy. Hi, and Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Nancy was telling us about a situation that she saw on the news where a person, a man, brought his wife home. Mm -hmm. So the wife was deceased. They discussed before she died that she wanted to come home for a period of six days. So that the family could come visit and yeah. say their last goodbyes and she could be, you know, in her natural environment and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but she wasn't to be embalmed. She was going to do it naturally. Um, and so apparently in this news report, Nancy said she had been washed and dressed and had plastic pants on and that was it. She was in a wicker coffin and they mm -hmm. brought her home. And Nancy said, you know, what do you think about that? So I was just interested to know, is that a law in Australia that you have to be embalmed to go home? No. It's not a law. It's not really? a law. Really? So you don't have to? No. Okay. No. So are there people that take their deceased home unembalmed? Uh, there has been. Oh. <laughs> That's, I don't know about that. You know, it's, it's not recommended, especially in summertime in Australia, it's not recommended because uh, without any treatment, you're going to decompose. So even in the winter, this winter has been a bit exceptional, it's been the coldest winter in Queensland. Usually our winters here are really pleasant, still 25 through the day, it's cool at night. Yeah. So yeah, um, and we just recently had somebody that um, their loved one passed away at home, but they informed us that that they had passed away at home, but not to collect her for about three days. They went, we don't want you to come and get her. So that we didn't even have anything to do with that. They had her at home so the family could do exactly that, come and visit. And then we picked up and then by the time we picked up, and this was not long ago, it was quite cold. The body was in advanced stage of decomposition, as in not visually where you could see, but the, um, you know the purge and start the distended of the tummy because it usually comes in two or three days after you. So when there. you're talking about purge, you're talking about liquid coming out of the mouth, yeah, the nose, the nose, ears, yeah, the down nose below. and the mouth. It's just you know. So as soon as we touch the body and turn and move out, everything comes. So in the, in that's fine if the family want that and you know it, it, this is not a problem. You can take them home, but you just have to be aware that the body is doing its natural mm. um, thing of decomposition. You have things like a cold cot that you hire for people, yeah, don't you, that you, they you, can... You can hire um, um, cold, like a cold cot for babies and also you can um, you can get cold plates that you can put on either a bed or in a coffin or you know underneath the deceased which will keep them chilled. When I was doing all that Victorian research, that mm -hmm. used to be a thing too. In Victorian times, yeah. they used to put a, um, a tray containing ice under the body. Yeah, well, we've done that before where people have gone home unembalmed and we've got dry ice and put it around the coffin inside so the covered with dry ice so that preserves them for a lot longer. So if people want to take them home for uh, unembalmed, they can and they do, but we w wouldn't have put ice in the coffin or dry ice or um, you can hire the metal uh, cool plates which is a, a it's becoming more popular now that than it was years ago um, it's more so for the babies than adults but yeah you, you can it's you a can very personal them. thing I think I can yeah. understand a parent wanting to take a baby home I can understand not wanting to give that up yeah 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 absolutely but I can't understand wanting to be next to a person yeah, because sometimes people just find and it I, hard to let go. And, yeah, and, obviously. And they need to have that process of time before, you know, they feel yeah. it's ready for their loved ones to be taken away from them. But, um, yeah, it is the thing. And, and we've got to remember, it's it's your family. It's not, you know, we, we're only, like, caretakers, basically. We, you, so you facilitate the decisions yeah. that you guys make. Yeah, yeah. We, we're just, um, we're there just um, to take care. We... You give us the permission to and look you after your happen. loved ones mm -hmm. and you bring them to the funeral home. You don't have to use a funeral home. Nobody has to use a funeral home. You can do it all yourself. You know, it's just you'll have to organise the, 
the cremation and go through all the legal part of it as a funeral home does that a funeral home does all the legal stuff have you ever had um people and i don't know if you'd see this in the mortuary maybe the funeral directors would see it more but um where they just want you to do the legal stuff and they ring the crematorium they come to you and get a cardboard box take it home um they sort of do all the you know no, no, I don't no? know. Maybe okay. it's the habit. Not that I know of. But um, it, when you're talking legal stuff, it's to do with the crem and everything, because you've got all the paperwork for the crematorium, organise the the um paperwork that you need permission to cremate the body, and and also they've got a if it's a cremation, the family then have got to get a doctor involved, because yeah. the doctors have to come and certify Check the, body the body, make for, sure you know devices, and so if you have your loved one at home and they've got a pacemaker or a defib or anything that's electrical with a battery in you have to remove it so so it's a lot of logistical stuff so you don't want to be doing at that yeah, time really yeah it's stuff where the funeral will take all that away while you just concentrate on you know what you want in your last goodbyes of you know be taking the person home embalmed unembalmed you know just that you your head's in such a difficult place to then start doing the legal work and i have mm. to prepare my mum and take a pacemaker out it's like pretty graphic for the person to have to do a little incision to remove the pacemaker and all that kind of stuff so hence i think why funeral homes are around mm. is to take away a lot of the yeah. burden of everything that goes with legal processes I can so, understand why people use them yeah it's just it makes it simple for you you're just in too much of a bad place sometimes you know but you can have it as simple as you want you know and you don't have to have it lavish and pay a lot of money you know it depends but yes you can keep your loved one at home or you can take your loved one home uninformed you just got to be aware that the process of decomposition is going to be happening yeah, as of it. It's just a fact of yeah. it all, isn't Don't it? put the heating on, keep the windows closed because the flies will get in and you'll need to have everything sealed and just be aware. Keep the body cold and you can take them home. Yeah. Interesting. It is. Yeah. Thanks for that, Nancy, Thank starting you, Nancy. that conversation. Yes. It was an interesting conversation. Yeah, and it funny just happened recently. So yeah. Yeah. no doubt people will have their own comments to make on Absolutely, that. So let yeah. us know what you think. Yes. Um, and if it's something you've done or you've seen done, obviously mm -hmm. there's um, quite a few um, traditions from different cultures that involve taking the body home, like yeah. when we spoke to Chaz yes. um, oh, and the Maori cultures, cultures yeah. and taking mm -hmm. the bodies home. And yeah. also um, a lot of the Islander families do yeah. that, don't they? Oh, yes. It's a big, huge tradition yeah. for the Islander families to take them home. But the most of them are embalmed. So, yeah. yeah. Um, interesting. You know, but it is Thanks, interesting. Thanks, Nancy. That's Thank great. you. Yeah, and I'm, oh, well, we've got a live stream coming up. Oh, we have. We keep yes. forgetting to mention it. Live stream, live stream, everybody. Live. Do you know the date? Twenty first of August. Twenty first of August. Twenty first of August. Sunday morning, six a.m. Mm. Six a.m. Brisbane time, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, Brisbane time, six a.m. Yes, we'll be there. We'll be there. Will you be? Yes. That's the question. Yes, that is the question. Cool. And. Uh, you know, the easiest thing to find out what time it is in your area is just Google it. Yeah, don't ask us because we don't know. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> always asks us, so what time is that in northern Pennsylvania mm. or southern yeah. Arkansas or uh, so Cambodia? Remember, northern Hemisphere, you're going to be on your evening time and southern hemisphere, you're going to be on your daytime. And that's why we daytime. do it at 6 a.m. We don't want to get up at 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Yeah. That's not for us, it's for you. Yeah. So it can be the most convenient time for the most of our viewers because yeah. most of you guys are in the US or the UK. In the Northern Hemisphere, mm. yes. Yep. So, and, and you Aussies just love to get it up with us. That's all. <laughs> you just have to get up early with us. So get up, Aussies, and yeah. get up early. And we'll and, see you then. And we'll see you then. But don't forget, like, subscribe, share with your friends and your families. Yeah, share. Sharing is caring. Yeah. See ya. Bye.